Good morning guys from Botswana. We're at the camp. We survived the night sleeping in the car. I want to show you how close the animals get here. There's elephant prints right there where they were digging. <laughs> and last night there was actually hyenas right in the camp uh, chasing after some of the South Africans leftover barbecue, I think. So yeah, no, yes, the animals come in here. I've heard stories of lions in camp. Elephants are always in camp. As you saw yesterday, there was an elephant in our camp spot. I wanna show you where we camped last night because um, Jody was a little bit scared of, of camping in the tent with all the animals. We slept right back there in the back of the car. We actually took the air mattress and filled it about halfway so it filled up kind of. And yeah, it wasn't actually that bad to be honest. It was a little bit hot, but I think I slept a full eight hours amazingly. Now it's an easy pack up and we're heading back on the road, heading back to South Africa, probably about a 12 hour drive this morning. made it outside the gates and yeah that was an awesome experience in there in, in Botswana and the Okavango Delta. I said it was bucket list. I think it was better than I even expected. I think that when we come back we're probably going to do it in a vehicle that maybe has a pop-up tent on top so Jody's a little less nervous about camping with the elephants and I think that we will maybe come back here and spend three or four days because it just was that special an experience. We're cruising all the way down to South Africa. I don't think anything exciting is going to happen today other than me killing some flies in front of my face or something like that. So I think I'm just going to carry this video on till tomorrow. Well let's cruise. Had a, a long drive yesterday, 14 hours, almost hit a cow, almost hit several goats, almost got trampled by elephants while taking a pee, and didn't vlog it, but uh, yeah, it was a long, long day. It's now morning and we're in South Africa. In fact, that's Botswana just right there. This is South Africa. And what we didn't realize when we crossed the border here is that it's a sand road. But we're, yeah, we're cruising on the sand and we're heading to what I called the last time I was there, the best national park in Africa to see cats. We made it to Kalahari Trans, I don't even know what it is, Kalahari Trans Frontier Park, I think it's called. Um, this was one of my favorite parks in the whole world last time I was here just because of the abundance of cats. We're just here for one night, so we'll do a game drive tonight, one tomorrow morning. We're gonna check in here and uh, then go driving. Got energy and got the 5D Mark IV. No, sorry, that's the USR. I've decided I prefer shooting wildlife photography on the EOSR, which, yeah, still shocks me. We've been driving for an hour, and literally a second ago, Jody just said, you wouldn't even know there was animals in the park because there's nothing but it's so, so hot that I think most of the animals are hiding in the shade or yeah, they're just not around because it's so hot. But then just as we said it, a bunch of meerkats just ran across the road and there's something I've never seen before, a baby meerkat, which is awesome. So getting some video, getting some photos and I'm using that manual focus peaking. I'm not shooting autofocus. For those of you that don't know manual focus peaking, what it does essentially is it, it puts a color mask on it. And on the EOSR you have three choices, yellow, blue, or red. Depending on what you're shooting, you might want to change the color. So I'm using blue because everything's green and red right now. And so the blue really, really stands out and makes sure I get my focus right on the dot. And so essentially what happens is that blue just 
lights up everything that's in focus. So I know exactly when the shot's in focus. I know exactly when my video's in focus. I know exactly where the focus is. And it just works out really well. I think we're gonna keep driving, try to find some cats, and then I'll try to show you on the back of the camera how that focus peaking looks. So right after the meerkats, there was three lions on the road, one male and two females, but they're in the shade in terrible light and they're not doing much. So we decided we had to drive past them because we were kind of stuck, but they're right on the road and there's two females on the road and one male. And as we drove past them, the male just gave like a death stare. Whew, that gets a blood flowing, that gets a blood flowing. We left the lions because we think they'll be more active a little bit later. We'll come back to them. We found some ground squirrels here, which is another animal I don't think I've ever seen here in Africa. And I want to show you the manual focus peaking the best I can because it's kind of hard to show it with the, with a beanbag setup. But what you're going to see, um, let me actually let me flip the camera around so you can see the back of my EOS R. So you can see this blue line on the back of my camera. That blue line's right on this squirrel, which says that the squirrel's in focus. If I move the focus wheel, you see that blue band moving. So that blue band is now the focus, so I'd be back focused there. If we spin that forward, and I'm in focus again. On the EOS R, there's this other thing too, that green box tells you definitely you're in focus. That's how the manual focus peaking looks. It's hard to do one-handed. Obviously everything's flipping around, but you can see the blue line, that's in focus. That'll be a sharp image. fairly close. There's four vehicles here with them and we're all doing exactly the same thing. Just sitting here and waiting and hoping they do something, anything. Um, it was hot today. It's still 34 degrees out. The behavior of lions tends to be around this time of day that they don't do anything. They just lay in the shade, cooling off, digesting, whatever they're doing. And then really close to sunset, they sometimes get up and search for water, walk to a water hole. There's a water hole right next to us. They walk to that water hole and then they go on the prowl. So we're about an hour away from the camp right now and which means we really only have 15 minutes. So hopefully they get active really quick, but they definitely are doing nothing right now, nothing at all. What do you prefer? Leopards. Why? Oh, I like leopards because they're cute. Whew. 
that was phenomenal. There's so many reasons I love this park, and one of the big reasons is because you see cats really easily, but on top of seeing cats really easily, they're always really close because you're in this valley here. It's literally, I don't know, maybe 100 meters over there, and then you're right on the other side here. So when you see cats, they're always within photographing distance. The lines stayed there motionless. They didn't do anything. They just chilled out, but we had a couple moments when other cars drove past where they lifted up or they lifted their heads up and I got some clean shots. I think I also got a really good shot of one of the females yawning, which always looks really impressive. And uh, yeah, that was great. So um, it's time that we have to drive back to the camp so we don't get fined for being late. So we're gonna cruise. Okay, we're back home and I'm sorry that it's dark, but it's it's dark. <laughs> so that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Um, I wanted to talk quick about focusing because that's kind of been the focus of this video. Uh, a lot of people were asking me in earlier wildlife photography videos if I'm autofocusing or manually focusing. And a lot of people were asking me, what's the right thing to do? Should I be autofocusing or should I be manually focusing? And the reality is you should be doing whatever you can do to ensure yourself to get as many any sharp photos as humanly possible. So use whatever t technique you're most comfortable with. Personally, when I shoot wildlife, it really, really depends on the situation on what I'm doing. Generally speaking, if I'm out in the open somewhere, I'm just autofocusing because the autofocus is gonna be able to get the focus better than my eye can. But if I'm somewhere like in the bush and there's a lot of foliage in front of me and the animal behind me, the autofocus can sometimes grab onto the bushes and to the leaves and things in the foreground and it can be a pain. So in that situation, what I tend to do is I have the autofocus on and I focus and if it grabs something in the foreground, I just override it by using the manual focus wheel. So that's the way I used to get around it. But ever since I've had the EOS R, I've been using manual focus the whole time as long as there's some bush or something around just because then I know for sure I'm going to nail the focus. And I don't want to make it seem like the EOS R is the only camera in the world that does manual focus peaking. Any mirrorless camera on the planet does manual focus peaking. In fact, even DSLRs could do manual focus peaking if they were on live view or on video view. Um, and with Canon, you could do it on live view or video view if you had Magic Lantern installed on your camera. But I have a hard time photographing on the live view wildlife. I'd much rather look through the viewfinder. So to be able to have the EVF there and to be able to manual focus and get that color to show me that it's in focus has just been an absolute game changer. I feel like I haven't missed a focus shot because of that. I feel like because of manual focus peaking, I don't need autofocus when, fo when photographing wildlife and that's a huge thing for me. That's absolutely massive and it's the one thing of all the things of mirrorless cameras that I didn't expect to love that I've absolutely loved. It's been the one thing that for me, has been a game changer. It's been the manual focus peaking, and I never, ever, ever expected that. So, um, yeah, I kind of just wanted to end that this video with that. I do want to also end the video with me just saying, do whatever you're most comfortable with. I back button focus, I now manual focus a lot, but use the autofocus and override. But do whatever you're most comfortable with. Do whatever you can do to get the sharpest image possible. Autofocus, manual focus, whatever you feel most comfortable with, do that. And don't be afraid to experiment, play around and, and try different things. It'll be good for your photography. Um, it's been a great day in Kalahari. Trans Frontier Park. Tomorrow morning we have one last morning here and it's probably gonna be our last safari in Africa on this trip, which is super sad. And there's gonna be lots of landscape photography coming up, some seascape photography. We're going down the garden route later on. There's lots of photography still coming from Southern Africa. Just maybe no more wildlife photography after tomorrow. So yeah, kind of sad, but I'm excited for things to come too. So I'll leave you guys there and I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.